Johnny and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business? We can help. Vancouver Canucks president of op hockey operations, Jim Rutherford, joining us now. Jim, thanks so much for doing this. Thanks for making time. How are you, sir? Pretty good, thanks. How much has your team improved in the last uh, seven, eight, nine days or so? Well, you don't really know until you get can get into camp and get into the early going of the season. But based on what we set out to do, we got we got most of the we got all the things done on our forwards. Uh, of course, with having a tight cap, we're we're still looking to uh, to do some work on our back end. But um, all in all, uh, based on the plan we had going into free agency, with not a lot of defensemen available at uh, the price that that we could uh, afford at this point in time, uh, we feel we improved our forwards and improved our team. Does your group anticipate making a, a move to improve your group of NHL defensemen before the season? Well, you don't know. Mm -hmm. You know, we're we're going to always be discussing on things that we can do to improve. As everybody knows, we got a long ways to go with this team, but we have to take it a step at a time. Um, we have to do it. Uh, uh, try to do it in a timely manner. We all get impatient. Everybody gets impatient. We want it done sooner than later, but you can only you can only uh, make these deals when they're they're available to make. What sold you on Ilya Mikheyev? Uh We identified him uh, early on, probably in January, um, and then everybody in the organization really watched him close. Uh, we one of the things you want to do with this team is get faster and bigger and stronger. He covers all those things. He's an excellent penalty killer. He had a career year in goals, so we really don't know where that's going to go. You know, he scored uh, 21 goals in like 58 or 60 games. So you could make a case that he's going to do that again, or maybe a little bit better if he plays in our top six, which he should. Um, but you can also make a case that there's a downside to it because he's only done it once. But we believe in him as an organization. It was unanimous. We we really like this player. What do you uh, like about Curtis Lazar, uh, Jim? Well, he's a he's a veteran guy that that uh, was a first round pick that uh, always tried to live up to that and you know put himself in certain situations that may have been uh, tougher for him to handle but certainly where he's gotten in his career over this last year or two and uh, finding uh, the right niche for himself and accepting that he's 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 a good solid uh, bottom six uh, center iceman he's a right shot it's one thing that we needed he has great character and he's a veteran guy he know he knows how to play his role he's a, he's a good penalty killer and uh, there's this is another guy that, you know, we identified before free agency. We, we watched him close here the, the second uh, quarter of the season and uh, uh, a player that we feel that uh, is going to improve our team. Jim, uh, I'm going to drive you nuts uh, with the J.T. Miller stuff, but here we go again. You're in a Canadian market. People are impatient. Uh, where are you with J.T. Miller and where is this uh, heading? Well, I'll ask you, what are they impatient about? We have a, our best forward we still have in our lineup. What, yeah. uh, what, what, what's the impatience for? 1970 and no Stanley Cup since then, Jim. How about that? Yeah. No, Jim, everybody no, wants... That, no, 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 wait, wait, yeah. wait. That's not, that's not a fair answer. Okay. The hmm. fact of the matter is, is the guy got 99 points. Mm -hmm. And so are you saying we should get rid of him? Mm-hmm. But there's a million rumors out there, Jim, that you're, you tried to move them at the deadline at the draft. You guys are the guys that start the rumors, not us. So don't expect me to answer for the people that start rumors. Mm -hmm. In a perfect world, Jim, what happens with J.T. Miller for your organization? 
well, it, I'll say the obvious. It can go two ways. We, uh, you know, we can come to an agreement and keep them, and we have a very good player. Um, that's that's always difficult to do when a player is heading to free agency within a year, and uh, and he, and he's got really good numbers. So of course. What the player is expecting in the way of a contract compared to the team is is usually different, and uh, so we're trying to work through that process. And if that doesn't work, we have to get the best return we can for him. But I think when the impatience should come on J.T. Miller is when we get closer to the trade deadline, and if we don't have him signed at that point, making sure that we get a return for him. But I don't. I don't see where there's any urgency until we get to the trade deadline. Uh, Jim, everybody was surprised. I don't know about yourself, but everybody was surprised with Johnny Goudreau signing in Columbus. It came uh, out of nowhere. Not him necessarily leaving Calgary, but leaving for Columbus versus someplace closer to where he grew up in the New Jersey area. And so this question has, has come up since then. Is there an issue keeping American players in a Canadian market when when they become a free agent, they have that choice to go uh, back across the border? That's a tough one to answer. You know, like, there's different reasons. I mean, in this case, it's an American-born player, the yeah. same as Miller Miller is, and, and maybe that's where they want to play, you know. I mean, we, we just... Uh, with the Canucks here just recently, we were able to get some free agents to come here, albeit Lazar is from here, so it was nice uh, for him to come home, of course. But you get those two Russian free agents that wanted to come here. Mm -hmm. So there could be there could be a case to be made to say with the U.S.-born players that they'd prefer to play in a U.S. market. Um, one signing that went under the radar for a lot of people uh, because they didn't know much about the, uh, this player, and that's Dakota Joshua. And a, a lot of us, a lot of people in Canuck Nation, found out you guys signed him and looked on YouTube at some of his highlights, and he's impressive. He's old school. He drops the gloves. He's extremely physical. What role do you see him uh, uh, taking on with the Canucks next season? He'll be in our bottom six. Uh, two positional player can play left wing mm -hmm. or play center. He's big. He's strong. He's the kind of guy we identified that we'd like to get to change the makeup of our team. Uh, get a little more sandpaper there. And uh, he he had a terrific playoff in the American Hockey League. And that's really the stepping stone, the proving ground for a player uh, to get his next chance at the NHL level. And we followed him really close uh, down the stretch of the season in, in the playoffs, and uh, and and feel very strong that that he can help the Canucks. Uh, Jim, uh, you can officially now sign Bo Horvat to an extension. I know you love this player. Uh, any update on an extension for Bo, uh, Jim? No, I, I think that the, these things will pick up here now a little bit uh, with some of the guys that uh, trying to trying to get signed like Horvat now now that we're through the draft through the initial part of free agency but clearly he's a guy that uh, we want to be with the Canucks for a long time he's the captain of the team this should be his team going forward and uh, hopefully we can get something done sooner than later. Jim, how hard has it been to create cap space and move out bad contracts? Everybody, everybody sometimes thinks it's really easy but it's not that easy is it? Well, it's easy if you want to give a second or third round pick right. for somebody to take away a contract. But in the position we're in, we're trying to gain picks and assets and younger, younger players, younger assets, if you will. And uh, so, uh, you know, it, it makes it it makes it really difficult. We're we're caught in between here. Uh, we could do it, but then. We're giving up draft picks that we don't want to give up. I mean, if we're going to give up a draft pick, we want it to be for a player that's going to come in and play for our team this season. Right. Jim, every time I hear you uh, interviewed uh, before today, and certainly over the last couple of weeks, every time I hear you interviewed, you always bring up 
uh, at least in, in, in my eyes, from what I hear, Cami Granado and the job that she is doing, uh, helping out with player development, scouting. What can you tell us about the job she's done so far and what her future holds? Oh, she's got a great future. She's got a great hockey mind. The reason you've heard me talk about her uh, in this period of time is because we had development camp this week. <laughs> and, you know, it's important from my point of view to to tell people when they're doing well. And uh, and she's really done a good job. She She took her time. She looked at the amateur pro scouting development uh, staff, uh, looked at what changes that she'd like to make. She met with Patrick and I, made the recommendations. Uh, we said, go ahead, do what you need to do. She hired good people. She's got a structure in place. Everybody's accountable now. And I think when anybody that went to development camp this week uh, can see the job that she's done and our development staff, uh, which includes the Sedines, who who seem to be very happy with the role they're playing now, they could see the development camp that there's been changes made mm-hmm. and, and, and an improvement. And she deserves credit for that. Anybody stick out for you at uh, development camp, Jim? Yeah, I, I was I was really pleased uh, uh, with development camp. But, uh, um you know our our top four picks uh, are are really right uh, right where they should be. Um, the uh, free agent we signed uh, that was a draft pick of Colorado, Almond, uh, big center Iceman. He did a good job, but overall, just the camp, the the tempo of camp, and the compete in camp, and the competitive drills they were doing, and the focus was was really good. I, I just I just think we really had a good week at development camp. Let, let me let me get back to something we discussed in the middle of this interview, uh, uh, Jim. When it comes to uh, rumors and, and speculation and the heavy heavy interest in this hockey club in this Canadian Canadian market, do you think it hurts the Canucks' chances of keeping players of signing free agents? No, I think rumors are a part of our game. And I think it's great to have the interest that we have um, from our fan base and the media, and, and the rumors are just part of it. The point I was making earlier is don't expect me to explain the rumors because I'm not the one that starts them. But I understand how this works. And uh, so we have a great hockey market here, and everybody should feel proud of it. And so I don't think I don't think it hurts what we do. The one thing that, that that I would suggest that would bother somebody is when a player's rumored out there to be traded and we aren't even talking about it, it disrupts that player and his family. Mm-hmm. It doesn't disrupt the team. It disrupts the individual. And uh, and that's that's when I feel for the, for the player. But other than that, I understand how this works. And in a lot of ways, it's good for the game. Jim, when you first got here, you said possibly two, three years I can turn this around. You've been here now six, seven, eight months. Is that, is that timeline still around there, Jim? That's what we're hoping for. Right. That's what we're working towards. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, and, and, and one more thing. On a lighter note, uh, Jim, uh, you did an interview uh, with Sportsnet 650 recently, and we've had a lot of listeners, a lot of viewers wonder about this. Um, it sounded like there was a pet bird in the background. Do you have a pet bird? <laughs> yeah, no, I don't. I was sitting in my backyard, oh. Oh. and uh, all of a sudden, these birds started fighting in the tree. <laughs> oh, was it a raven? <laughs> uh, I don't know what it was, but uh, they were squawking pretty good. Okay, but I was but, I was hoping it wasn't getting picked up, but I guess it did. Yeah, it did. Squawking like Canuck fans and media. Jim, thanks so much for this. Have yourself a great summer. Yeah, you too, guys. Thanks a lot. You bet. Thanks, Jim. Uh, Jim Rutherford, president of the Vancouver Canucks. Uh, There was a whole lot there, especially when it came to uh, what he thinks about the rumors about uh, J.T. Miller. And we've heard that before from from Jim Benning, from now from Jim Rutherford, from uh, Mike Gillis, Brian Burke, that, you know, it's not so much about the team. It's not so much about the general manager. A lot of it has to do with what it does to 
a player's family. Yeah, right? there's no question. And we can go back to Brock Besser. He had a tough year, and he had to hear it, and we didn't know what was going on in the background. So, yes, it is tough on players in this market, and anybody that says that it's not true well, is Well, the players not, can take it's it. It's not, yeah, well. The players can take easy. it. It's their kids going to school. It's, wow. the, it's the wives and, 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 you know, moms and dads and that. And that that's who it affects, and as a result, it then affects the player. And hold it a second. I, we're getting ripped here in the Delaney's OK Tyron Langley inbox. I didn't ask anything out of the ordinary about JT Miller. You brought up 1970, and Jim kind of went and said, you know, 1970. I had nothing to do with no, that. No, he was I talking just, about impatience, I, though, right? I, know. I mean, that's where it comes from All for I a ask, lot of us. Uh, am I not going to ask about JT Miller to, to Jim Rutherford? We got him on? Of course I am. Uh, SS here in uh, Burnaby. Don't worry about what people are doing. Uh, just, you know what? Are you kidding me? I'm not going to ask about JT Miller? I mean... Please, really, SS? Come yeah. on. But, Give uh, your head a shake. Just to the defense of people who are impatient, and, and Jim knows this. I mean, it does go back for a lot of us, especially older people, wow. uh, and, and there are a lot of us out there. It does go back to 1970. Well, you yeah, do feel that's impatient. Right. You, know, you know, three Stanley Cup finals, no Stanley Cups. That, that, that's where it, it, it comes from. But Jim, uh, Jim explained himself well. Yeah, and good on Jim for uh, attacking all these rumors. You know, he doesn't start them. The national guys start them. You know, he just said, you know, I'm not going to answer to these stupid rumors. Yeah. 